Good morning. Uh, so we are almost uh, uh, the uh, closure of uh, concluding our course, vehicle dynamics. We are in the last module. Uh, last class we were looking at uh, an important tire model, uh, which is one of the uh, oldest uh, uh, tire model, Julian's tire model it is called, where uh, the tire is considered to be a tread band, elastic band, and the contact patch happens to be uh, uh, rectangular uh, during the tire road interaction, rectangular shape. And uh, uh, the normal pressure distribution normally won't be uh, uniform and it will be skewed towards forward of the uh, contact patch from the center of the contact patch. But we have considered in Julian's model when complete addition of the contact patch is there with the ground, the pressure distribution, normal pressure distribution is uniform across the contact patch. <laughs> across the contact length from front of the contact patch to the uh, trail, trailing end of the contact patch. And uh, further uh, the same uh, elastic model, uh, band model is assumed that uh, it would uh, not be uh, 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 sufficient to consider that the addition of complete contact patch with the ground, uh, rather the phenomena of sliding to also to take place at the rear of the contact patch to progress towards the front of the contact patch in order to bring in the in real uh, effect of non-linearity of variation of uh, tractive force, uh, which is essentially a function of a phenomena called a longitudinal slip when there is a driving torque is applied. So this is what essentially that uh, uh, our understanding, we were able to uh, <coughs> bring in the mathematical aspect of this understanding and to derive an expression for the tractive force uh, uh, as function of slip. Uh, or braking effort as function of skid for uh, a given tire uh, uh, model. So such model will be quite useful model in vehicle dynamic simulation. That's what we have seen in the last class, right? And today we are going to look at, uh, yeah, any doubt? Yeah, today we are going to look at an another model uh, which is going to uh, bring in the properties of uh, tire for cornering. So cornering properties of tire. So this is also another in, nice model proposed by Temple and Von Shippey. And that's what we are going to uh, uh, discuss and derive a lateral force and self-aligning torque uh, expression for a tire uh, uh, when it is interacting with the road surface. Right. So let me share my PPT uh, and start the class. So, we are able to see the screen and uh, just uh, uh, quickly browse through what we have done in the last class. So, uh, uh, this is what we have seen in the last class. There are some basic assumption of Julian's theory. And with that, uh, we looked at uh, on the basis for uh, getting the force uh, and the contact patches, the deformation that takes place in the tire, the tread deformation. So, the tread deformation will be uh, essentially uh, depends upon the elastic property in adhesion zone and adhesive property in sliding zone. So that's what uh, we have understood. And we have defined an important uh, characteristic called characteristic length. So this characteristic length is the length, which is not a physical length. It would be equal to the length of the tread in contact with the ground, which is adhered to the ground. So it may happen that uh, from point O to A, which is linear here, uh, you see the complete contact patch is adhered to the ground. That's where we define this critical slip value and the corresponding critical uh, lateral uh, longitudinal force value, uh, tractive force value. And uh, beyond this, you see it is nonlinear variation. That nonlinear variation to bring into our concept of this model only, we define this characteristic length and then we apply appropriately the conditions uh, for sliding to start at the rear of the contact and to progress towards the front of the contact all uh, with the help of this characteristic length. And then we were able to derive an expression uh, wherein uh, it is sum of the force, it is sum of the force in the uh, sliding zone plus the adhesion zone. And then we would see that uh, the expression derived uh, would have a nonlinearity uh, in its equation, that is equation number 14. And in this, uh, uh, the portion of the tread in front of the contact patch, which is under compression, determination is something complex. Uh, uh, it requires a, a tedious experimental procedure. 
So if we neglect that also, it is viable to have a model which can also fit into this uh, 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 curve which is appearing on the uh, uh, graph. So that's what uh, we were uh, looking at it and then uh, defining this longitudinal stiff stiffness which is analogous to C alpha that you have seen in your uh, uh, lateral dynamics, uh, uh, tire uh, lateral stiffness, this is longitudinal slip stiffness and so on that we continue with this and uh, we are able to uh, derive uh, the expression for uh, total tractive force which is again given in this uh, uh, expression 24 which is again a non-linearity of this is taken. And we concluded just like as it is for a particular load we derive, as you increase the load, the curve uh, will vary like this for a particular load, uh, one curve likewise. So that's what uh, we looked at. And then uh, we were also extending our tractive force as this function of slip to define um, breaking upward as function of skid. We define what is skid and then uh, we were able to replace, uh, uh, establish a relationship between slip and skid and this has helped us to modify those equations and to get our uh, breaking upward expression in this uh, format. So in this, uh, uh, it's all for a given load and for the uh, uh, skid stiffness it is called and it is skid, uh, we will be able to derive what is this breaking force. So this equation uh, 31 and equation 24 are the two equations which could be used for tractive effort or braking effort uh, in a vehicle simulation model. So this is what is proposed by Julian's. So this model is called the Julian's theoretical model. And uh, today's class uh, uh, we are going to continue with. So last uh, uh, class uh, two hour session was uh, uh, lecture number 42 and 43 and today's lecture uh, number it is 44. We are going to uh, deal with properties uh, of tire for cornering. So this is lecture number 44. In today's date, uh, uh, this, today's date is 4th November, 4-11-2020. What is that we are going to see is cornering properties of tire. Cornering properties of tires. <laughs> See, like uh, uh, for uh, uh, longitudinal uh, dynamics, for uh, tractive force, we defined an important uh, uh, definition called I, longitudinal slip, as what is that we define R omega minus V by R omega into 100%. R we define skid as V minus R omega by V into 100. So these are for longitudinal or longitudinal dynamics properties of tire. This is important so that we were able to get Fx versus I graph which was varying in this fashion. So you had here an I max and you had here I critical corresponding value here, Fxc, and you'd be able to get your peak value of tractive force, that's maximum tractive force or breaking of force, dictated by Vp times W. And in case uh, beyond this I value, slip value, if it is increases and it will fall suddenly when it is 100% uh, of slip, you will have uh, so value is going to be mu s times w. So rotor division coefficient is going to be simply sliding coefficient of drive friction and you will have this fall so drastically down and then you will have uh, spinning in case of uh, tractive force applied. In case of uh, braking effort, it will be rather uh, uh, gradually stopping, it will be skidding. So V log takes place. So both uh, uh, reaching this kind of value is an uh, uh, unstable state of your uh, vehicle, right? Yeah. So this is on one hand. On the other hand, when I say cornering properties of tires, like I and IS, slip and skid, you define, you require slip angle 
So slip angle is what already we have seen in our uh, uh, lateral dynamic study. I have introduced that. If you look at that, uh, uh, if you see the top view of the tire, we have seen that whenever there is a side force, whenever there is a side force, so this is the axis of the tire, whenever there is a side force acting, the center of the tire and this is your wheel plane and you see that uh, uh, your uh, contact at the bottom is going to be uh, uh, coming like that because of side force it comes like this and uh, you see that uh, the rotation that the wheel travel direction is not along the wheel plane it is at an angle so this angle is what is we defined as slip angle and this is your uh, uh, forward direction uh, with which it goes so if you see here, the side force is applied, you'll have uh, the contact patch uh, with an offset, uh, you will have a lateral force uh, uh, developed Fy alpha, that's function of the slip angle, Fy alpha, and uh, you also have defined what is this is called a pneumatic trail, TP. So interestingly that uh, if you look at the longitudinal force uh, is function of normal that we have seen. That means uh, this is for the given load and the normal is increases that graph will be uh, going to shift it like this shift like this for next value it's going to shift like this so as it is increasing with the w normal you have seen that and then uh, the resultant normal force is in front of the contact patch which is uh, responsible for uh, uh, you are rolling resistant moment and then rolling resistance force that we have seen Similarly, this phenomena of slip angle where the wheel travel direction uh, angle to the wheel plane is what is uh, defining slip angle is manifested uh, in the tire in order to generate this Fi alpha and uh, that would be given by C alpha into alpha that we have seen and we looked at uh, the variation of Fi as function of alpha uh, is going to be uh, uh, varying something like this and it is limited by your road addition coefficient. So this would be uh, uh, um, <coughs> uh, uh, very steep at the beginning and it is it is for bias tire, it is gradually varying. So this is for bias tire and this is for radial tire. So in bias tire, the variation is very gradual. That is the reason why in motorcycle, you see still uh, bias tires are used compared to that of other vehicles, passenger cars are. So here you'll have your slope is more, you'll have your uh, cornering stiffness more, and that would benefit for uh, good uh, cornering maneuverability property for the tire. So this is for, this is the kind of variation that we have looked at. Uh, on this, this is for the uh, uh, Fy as function of alpha, alpha variation. And uh, now this Fy is, which is with an offset to the center would create a moment and that moment is what is called the self-aligning torque. Self-aligning torque. So this self-aligning torque is responsible to make your tire to adhere to the direction of travel after negotiating the curve, after this uh, um, uh, 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 FS is disappearing. So that's what is uh, the function of the self-aligning torque. So if you look at the self-aligning torque uh, also will vary uh, as a function of uh, uh, slip angle uh, and uh, uh, it will increase till some slip angle afterwards it will start decreasing it so if you look at uh, the variation is that as function of alpha so this will increase as the slip angle increases after that it will also fall so uh, this is the kind of variation of uh, uh, msf that you will see so why is it because as more slip angle coming uh, you will have your fy value after that uh, uh, reaching this uh, you'll not you'll have a sliding of your tire in the lateral direction that will bring this down so your mz will be decreasing that's one reason as uh, uh, this decreases there is also a, 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 a value of tp decreases so this will move towards the center of contact patch and then what will happen uh, is was the reason for your uh, self-aligning torque also reduces as function of slip. So this is what you have to remember in mind uh, when you talk on uh, uh, the generation of slip angle.
slip uh, lateral force, uh, which is primarily depends upon slip angle. And uh, if uh, the C alpha, which is called uh, lateral stiffness, lateral stiffness, and that is constant, then it is a linear model. But uh, this is not constant. This can be expressed as function of uh, Fz. Then uh, 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 Fy can be expressed as function of Fz. Then it can become also a nonlinear uh, model. So this is all something that we have uh, already seen. Please uh, revisit those definitions. So what we have looked at in the previous class. Also read the textbook Wang uh, uh, on, on the topic of cornering force and slip angle. And uh, also you know that uh, uh, this cornering force, how is it been defined? Uh, here is, uh, it is defined by the slope at this curve. So the slope at this curve at alpha is equal to zero. It is dou f y alpha by dou alpha. When alpha equals zero, uh, what you define is c alpha, right? This is the definition of uh, uh, lateral stiffness. Of course, we do not consider at that time an important angle called the camber angle. So no camber no camber then uh, you define this so what do you mean by camber angle now so camber angle is the inclination of the tire wheel plane so this is tire wheel plane uh, about which i have my tire what goes something like this right so this is my tire in the uh, side beam uh, 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 it, it, it is not seen in the side view. So this is my tire, which uh, uh, which is now inclined, and that will have uh, an inclination. Wheel plane will have an inclination to the vertical. So this angle is what is gamma, called the camber angle. Camber angle, right? So this camber angle. Uh, is important and this is a camber angle positive and how this camber angle comes is uh, assume that this tire is now a uh, free rolling tire what will happen this tire will have uh, to rotate about a point uh, on the ground which is point o so this is not a, uh, this is a free rolling tire but however this tire is constrained to have a pressure in the axle and uh, you'll have this uh, angle which is exaggeratedly drawn here uh, would be smaller angle, maybe in a person with a half degree to one degree only, which could not be realized by naked eye. Uh, uh, but when it is a free rolling tire, the tire uh, uh, just to be in, uh, rotating about this point, and that would uh, create this angle, and uh, uh, you will have a force uh, uh, which is generated here at the contact in the direction uh, where the center of rotation is false. So this uh, uh, is what is called the lateral force due to camber. So this is called the camber thrust camber thrust and this is also addition to your uh, f uh, y alpha that's what you have to understand and the main purpose of this camber provision is to have your kingpin inclination offset reduction so what is that is that steering column inclination uh, uh, to the vertical so if you see that would be somewhere here this is your steering column uh, and its inclination. That's what is called the kingpin inclination. This is what is called the kingpin inclination. Kingpin inclination. So this inclination uh, and this offset called the kingpin offset. Kingpin offset. Kingpin offset. It's slipping. Um, just a minute. My stylus and this graphic card is slipping. Otherwise, I have to write very slowly. Kingpin offset. Uh, so, uh, this is the purpose, this is the reason to have a minimum kingpin offset in order to have a reduction in a tire wear. So, if this is very less, the tire wear will be less. And uh, uh, for that is the reason why this camber is provided in your vehicle, uh, tire wheels. Uh, it is an angle defined by wheel plane to the vertical. Angle uh, made by wheel plane to the vertical uh, plane, that is XZ plane, is what is uh, camber angle. 
So this angle, uh, however, is exaggerated in this diagram, and uh, because of this angle, you will have a lateral force uh, uh, develop. So in this case, as it is free rolling tire, we say there is no side force, and alpha is considered to be zero. Zero. So if I have that, uh, I will have again the definition here corresponding to the uh, lateral stiffness defined by slip angle for the tire. I will have now camber stiffness and that would be defined as do f y due to camber by do gamma. That is what is defining now this when gamma is actually equal to zero. Of course, there is no consideration of alpha that is zero. So that is how independently you define this. Uh, parameter called camber stiffness, like you define camber, uh, like you define uh, long, uh, lateral slip stiffness. So these are the uh, uh, definitions of stiffness in order to have um, uh, classification or variation uh, or characterization of the different class of tires, right? So that is the thing. So what would happen? The total uh, uh, lateral force is now going to be F Y alpha plus or minus f y gamma f y gamma so let me call this equation as 33 equation number in order to continue with what we were doing in the last class numbering and equation number 32 uh, let me put this, this is my equation number 32 definition of c alpha and equation number 31 is what is that your f y b which already we had in the last class so see this is the equation number 31. So I just to continue with that uh, numbering uh, so that you, know, you will uh, uh, easily refer uh, sometime whenever these equations are there because all are uh, one, uh, one or the other way connected. So the numbering is very essential when you are documenting uh, for the equations. So uh, now uh, this is what is your total one. So I have put here plus or minus is because uh, if we have positive camber and uh, slip angle uh, 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 is in this direction, you will have Fy and uh, Fy gamma and Fy alpha in the same direction, so it get added. If we have a negative camber provided in a vehicle, then you will have this uh, minus sign. So uh, you will have here, uh, this is equation number 34. And uh, you can also rewrite this equation by substituting this, uh, so Fy equals c alpha into alpha plus or minus c gamma into gamma and it is also interesting to note that this camber thrust will be not uh, uh, on the rear part of your center of the contact patch like uh, uh, fi alpha fi gamma generally it will be in front of the contact patch and that would create a camber couple camber moment moment due to camber and that uh, uh, camber torque would uh, be counter uh, acting the uh, self aligning torque. But uh, the uh, uh, amplitude or quantity of this uh, uh, torque would be one tenth or one fifth of the time that is of self aligning torque. So it can be uh, altogether uh, the resultant Fy will lie at the rear of the contact patch with the distance uh, by pneumatic trail Tp. And this pneumatic trail TP, the typical value for a uh, uh, truck tires, if you take, that would vary from some 5 centimeter to 7 centimeters. So that we can keep in mind. And uh, uh, this is an expression for FY. But this is very linear model. So this is not brought in our uh, uh, physics of what is this uh, mechanism that takes place between tire contact patch and the road while they are interacting. So how do you bring in that is what has been proposed by <coughs> Temple and Von Shippey, which I am going to explain you in another half an hour and complete today's class. So let's look at now uh, um, the model proposed by Von Shippey and Temple. So what is that model is Temple and Von Shippey. So uh, you, uh, you Pronounce the name very carefully. Right. On C, uh, spell it correctly. C, L I is soundless. One should be temple and one should be model. 
So what is that model they propose? This string model. String model. So what is the string model? Is uh, this? So if I consider my tire, and tire wheel pain, you know, that is uh, going to intersect the, the tire tread, and you will have a circumferential circle. So that circle is what is your tire model. I'm not going to take a tire model like a Julian's tire model, which is an elastic band. So you had a width of the band B, and that goes in a circle. So we are not going to consider that model in order to bring in the properties of uh, cornering force or characterization of this cornering force. So we are going to consider a string model, and that string model, since it is a string, it is one one uh, 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 the thickness, the uh, width of the uh, thread is uh, now neglected. So it is the intersection of wheel pane with the thread of the tire. So you can easily imagine. So if you imagine that uh, uh, my tire, uh, uh, when it is loaded, it is on the ground. So this portion is uh, flat. And then uh, my tire model is simply a circle after this. So this is my tire model. Like that, I will consider. So if I consider this and I take this contact patch, and uh, if I look at that in the top view, if I look at that in the top view, I'm not going to have a contact patch. Instead, I will have a contact line. So let me draw here uh, a line. So this is what is my uh, 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 representing my wheel plane. In that, I will have my contact line. This. So this is the contact line. And then this will come here as this. And if I project this point here, and that's what is ending here. And similarly here, I will have, maybe this slope is a bit more, and it comes here like this. So let's call this point uh, now, this point uh, as A, this point as B, this point as C, and this point as D. Where it this point as D. So this is how it will be. So if you see that it is what it is in the contact line and that it is coming like this and goes around and then comes back here. So that is what is uh, your uh, string model. Now you see this is not, uh, this is deformed, it is loaded and you know when there is a side force, you have this uh, 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 shifting of your thread uh, uh, to the uh, side like this. So you can look at in this diagram, this, uh, uh, the thread in contact is shifted. So this is in the ground contact, it's shifted like that. So you look at this midpoint and this midpoint. So that is what does that I have drawn from the wheel plane as a string model. So if you look at that string model here, that would have its lateral deviation here, y1, and here, y2. Lateral deviation from the, uh, uh, what is this? this is center plane, wheel center plane. So let's call this deviation y1 and y2. So let me draw this diagram once again uh, with the bigger size. So that's what you would see in your long textbook. Uh, uh, so you have to understand what is the diagram. So this is A point and uh, this is B point and this is contact line BC in the uh, ground and then uh, there is a discontinuity and that comes here and goes like this. So this point is D point. So here is this distance is what I would call it as Y1 and this distance as Y2. So this is contact line. line. Right? So now let us define something called what is equatorial line. Equal equatorial line. So this equatorial line is that line, what is the string? So the string is goes around the uh, uh, tire tread and it is an intersection of the tread uh, uh, with the wheel plane when it is not loaded. But when it is loaded and the side force is acting, you would see that it becomes like this. Why? Because 
the model string model proposed is essentially represented by a string which is in contact and that has been uh, under tension say ft and uh, which is now supported by lateral stiffness springs which necessarily represent the side wall in turn that side wall is connected to the bead so if you look at uh, this is bead Sorry, it is a bead. A bead is sitting on the rim, so let's call this as a rim. Rim of your tire wheel assembly, and these are all representing side wall. So side wall will have its stiffness that is K Y. That stiffness of the side wall spring. It is side wall uh, stiffness is represented by spring, and this each spring uh, uh, are connected to the. Uh, um, string which is under tension, and this string model is what is this tire model, and represented by equatorial line, and that equatorial line has got two part. One is part of the equatorial line in contact uh, uh, when it is side forces applied, lateral forces developed, and part of the uh, uh, equatorial line which are not in contact, which are free length. That would be. From point B to A, and then it goes around the circumference and come back to point B to C, so till C. So B C is in contact. So if you see, uh, um, uh, um, A B length is going to be occupying the position of B C as this wheel is now going to revolve, and it is going to um, uh, um, translate. Then what will happen? The position of B C will be replaced by A B. And that is how the entire free length of the string will come and go inside the contact patch and leave and go. That is what is the uh, physical tire model as a stretched string model that we are going to consider. So the string model is what is the stretched string model. String model, right? A stretched string model that we are considering. So this uh, FT, if you look at, uh, it is uh, uh, customary or uh, it is uh, uh, they are proposed. This will be uh, uh, equal to KY times LR square. What is this LR? Is what is called a relaxation length. What is this LR? It's relaxation length. Relaxation length. <coughs> right. This is relaxation length. Uh, I mean, uh, uh, recording this. Yeah. This is relaxation length. And uh, uh, where is this relaxation length is defined? If you look at here, uh, this y1 uh, correspondingly, if I take here, there is uh, uh, a length here. So this length is what is LR relaxation length. So this LR, if you look at, uh, for the tire of radius R, for the tire of radius R, free rolling tire radius R, if you look at the free length, let us call it as H, LH, L substrate H is uh, free length, free length. This free length would be 4 times, 4.5 times R2, this LH, will be varying from 4.5 times R to 7 times R. Whereas this LR is going to be equal to almost the radius of the tire. So that is what is the relaxation length. So what do you mean by relaxation length? See, this is under uh, uh, stretch string which is under contact and that when it suddenly comes out of the contact, this is to relax and get its shape again and it goes. So this portion of the length is what is called a relaxation length, LR. So KY into LR square is what is this tension quantified by this uh, uh, tension in the string. So that is FP, right? So if you look at immediately after this point to see in this string model, what is that you see is the slope of this curve here and this angle is same. So as this string is now stretched like this, if we draw the tangent here, and this is the tangent, its inclination here is what is defining slip angle, alpha. And uh, you will have your direction of motion as this. So this is direction 
of motion. This is the direction of motion. As it is uh, uh, applied with some lateral force. So if this is so, now this tangent at uh, uh, this side and uh, same as this, it is continuous at point B. So at point B, if you look at this, is a common tangent for the curve as well as this contact length. Whereas that's not so on the rear uh, trailing end as it leaves the contact patch. So this is uh, decreasing here exponentially. Exponentially, right? E raised to minus one value. So the value of uh, 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 decrease in this uh, uh, um, uh, angle, uh, the length is what is the exponentially decreasing. So you would say that uh, the uh, deflection described by an exponential function decreases by e raised to minus one. What does that mean? It's one by two point seven one eight times of its prior value. Of its prior value. That's a that is how this value is decreases here, right? This y2 is become zero uh, with this rate it is decreases. That's the meaning. So if I take a slope here, uh, the slope here, and that slope uh, would corresponds to this y1, and then I would be able to have angle alpha defined here as uh, y1 minus y2 because smaller angle alpha it is tan alpha. When alpha is very small, alpha equals it is y1 minus y2 by lt. Lt. What is lt? Is the contact length. So lt is this. Lt is the contact length. So this contact length I am going to divide into two half so that I will get midpoint of the contact patch. So that is over here. So let me uh, represent that with this color. So this is the point O. That is midpoint of the contact patch. So I have this point B from here at a distance LT by 2, and from here at a distance LT by 2. I'm just describing you what am I considering this model consideration. Then we, it is easy for us to start deriving the expression. <clears throat> so you have now uh, 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 your model uh, picture. Uh, is this, which is uh, in the top view of your uh, equatorial line of your uh, tire model. Equatorial line of your tire model. So equatorial line, how do you define? Once again, I will repeat it. Equatorial line of a tire, which is intersection of undeformed tire tread with the wheel thing. That's what I was telling. Undeformed tire. That means uh, before it is apply, uh, applied with the lateral force, whatever is there, that's a circle. That is equatorial line. So there is a part of equatorial line in contact called the contact length that is BC and uh, the uh, other portion uh, BA and comes back to DC is what is three length LH. So the values of LH and LR are given in terms of radius of the uh, uh, tire uh, for typically for a truck tires, right? So if you are keeping that in mind, now let us look at uh, what is that uh, forces that are acting on the string, right? Those are an external forces acting on the string, which make the tire deflection. So any time force generation, what is important? The uh, um, body is assumed to be an elastic in nature. So the tire model, uh, Julian's proposed elastic deformation. So there is a deformation of your tire. But here, since it is a string model considered, the tension string is connected by uh, the uh, lateral stiffness springs that represent the side wall. Another turn on the other end of the spring is connected to the uh, base rim. So you, this is your tire model now. So when you have this tire model, the deformation or the deflection that takes place in lateral direction uh, on the uh, due to the side wall stiffness defined by KY here is responsible for a generation of the lateral force. So deflection is what is required for to generate your lateral force. So the same base what we consider for longitudinal force development, uh, the same way we are going to consider now for uh, lateral force as well. So if I consider like that, I can have two forces given by these equations for an element that is considered. So what is that element that I consider? If my contact patch center is O, I will have an element on this BC considered at the distance x 
in this at the distance x from this contact patch at the same time at the distance y in the lateral direction y from here right if i consider this so this point uh, i will consider an elemental string with the uh, thickness dx length dx length then i would be able to write my uh, differential form of the force so df y 1 by dx the dx if i take it on that side so df y 1 by dx is what is essentially represent your uh, force per unit length but dx i am taking it on that side so that's going to be ky into y y is what is the deflection in the lateral direction ky is what is the stiffness of the side wall into dx so let's call this equation as 36 equation number 36 and another force is coming because of the tension ft ft in the string so that is fy the second force that would be proportional to the curvature that is proportional to the curvature of your string so uh, that is how you get uh, this expression ft and d squared y by since it is proportional to the curvature d squared y by dx squared term comes in this and there is a basic you know, theory of uh, strength of material that we can look at it later on uh, from the standard textbook, uh, which is string model. I'm just taking this equation and co continuing with my uh, derivation. So into this dx, so it would become a force due to this, and this is equation 37. <laughs> so if you look at, uh, these are of opposite sense, this component along y, that is why this minus sign comes here at this element, right? So now what does that uh, I would have here, uh, my next equation is, if I add these two forces, so these are the two forces which are acting on the string now external means, right? And that would be acting only on the contact length of the line which is in the contact patch. So you also have the part of the line which is not in contact patch is free from these forces. So when these are free from these forces, some of these two forces, zero on those contact patch is what I'm going to define uh, for the uh, uh, free length of the equatorial line. So let us consider this LH which is not loaded by external means. Let LH is the total length is the total length the tire is not loaded by external means by external means. That means what dfy1 due to the uh, uh, lateral deflection plus dfy2 due to the uh, tension in the string, tension in the string and these two force are acting on the uh, uh, length is zero. It's only in the element. So this elemental force, what we had uh, just expressed by those equations, is equal to zero. So if I substitute those uh, equations 36 and 37 in this, I would have ky common taken out, and I have y minus lr squared. So I'm going to replace my ft by ky lr squared. We have seen ft, uh, it, it is... Uh, Uh, what is it? Ft is given by ky into lr square. So if I substitute that and the ky taken out lr square d square y by dx square uh, take out uh, uh, this dx equals to 0. So dx cannot be equal to 0 because that is a physical elemental length that you consider. So I can write ky into y minus lr square d squared y by dx square equals 0. So let us call this equation as equation number 38. So this is the differential equation, differential equation uh, uh, that is uh, from the forces which are not acting on the free length. So why do I do that? That's because uh, what is y here? Y is the deflection of the tire uh, from the wheel plane. 
in lateral direction. So I want to get this deflection. So to get the deflection, I get this uh, advantage of these two forces not acting at the free length and equating to zero. And this become now an uh, uh, ordinary uh, differential equation. The solution of this differential equation would uh, give me the expression for this lateral deflection. So if I do the solution of this differential equation, I will get the deflected shape of the equatorial line in free region. In free region. It is not in contact length. In contact length, you know that is by this contact length uh, BC. In free region, what is the deflection? That means you had here, there is a portion till A, and you had here, there is a discontinuity that we call it as kink formation. Kink formation, and that comes out like this. So, what is this deflection that I have to get, right, uh, of the uh, length which is free in front of contact patch and rear of the contact patch? Of course, uh, uh, once it is leaving out of the uh, ground, that uh, uh, ground here, uh, the deformed shape is uh, uh, wheel plane is vertical only. Only here it is there. So, since this is deviated and this portion uh, uh, is under this slope, so this is reduced here gradually. And whereas here it is reduced exponentially. So at this free length uh, from point B, A and goes back to point D to C, what is my deflection is what is given by this solution of this equation 38. And that solution is what I'm going to write quickly. I'm not going to solve it. And if you look at that, that's going to be Y2 sin H of X minus LT by 2 by LT plus Y2 sin H of LT by 2 plus LH minus X by LR. So this is not LT, this is LR, LR relaxation, LR, LR. That's equation number 39. So if you look at this again, uh, uh, um, this equation, uh, so this all divided by, I have also the solution if you look at. Advanced mathematical textbook, you see how do you solve this and you would be able to get this sin h, l h by l r. So in this uh, you can have your uh, value uh, given for l h in terms of uh, 4.5 times of radius of the tire to seven or six times of radius that we consider and LR as R and then your expression uh, can be expressed as an exponential function instead of this hyperbolic sine function. You can represent that as uh, exponential function. So for free region, for free region near the front of contact area area that is what x is greater than l t by 2 right understand why x is greater than l t by 2 because uh, l t by 2 is what is uh, uh, your uh, uh, contact patch length uh, from b to this point o so this is l t by 2 so from here onwards when x is greater than I measure my x from point O for an elemental uh, length to consider. So if x is greater than LT by 2, that represent uh, the portion of the uh, equatorial line not in contact with the ground and just in front of the contact patch for the region AB to account. Similarly, x is LT by 2 plus LH if I take, uh, that comes to point C, remaining length of that. Or it is minus LT by 2 either take x is minus lt by 2 in this direction or that is lt by 2 plus lh so that's what i am going to consider and write my this one single equation 39 conveniently in an exponential form uh, uh, for the portion of the uh, free length in front of the contact patch as y equals y1 exponential function within bracket minus x minus LT by 2 by LR. Let's call this equation as 40, equation number 40. And for the region 
near the rear of the contact point, near the rear of the contact patch, contact patch as y equals y2 exponential power minus Lt by 2 plus Lh minus x by Lr. So this is the equation 41. So if you look at here, if I substitute x is equal to Lt by 2, what will happen? The exponential power 0, that's 1, so I get y1. What was that? I had considered at point B, what is my lateral deflection y1. At point C, it is y2. So x is equal to Lt by 2 plus Lh if I substitute, I will have uh, y2. So that is how these exponential functions are used to uh, define what is my deformation, lateral deformation of the portion of the equatorial line which is free region in front of contact patch and rear of the contact patch respectively. Whereas this y is 0 before point A and y is 0 before point D. That you know, right? Why? Because you look at this model again, once again, critically, the point A is the point where you have uh, uh, the point of intersection here, right? Uh, so from here onwards, whatever the length that comes is not uh, under any white deflection. So deflection is from A to B in free region and D to C in free region or C to D in free region, you can say other way, right? In C to D in free region is where we define our relaxation length and LR, right? So the prediction of LR and KY is what is very important in our tire model. This is the expression when we derive. So that to find, we have to conduct some uh, experiments. And that experiments and this expression from this model would help you to find out KY and LR quantitatively. That's what at the end of the lecture you would understand and appreciate. So let us just now continue with this uh, model now what we have. So we have made a base for now uh, uh, going ahead with the getting our expression. So this is for the deflection uh, uh, for the free region. But what is the force in the contact region? That's what is proposed by Temple. And that force Fy is integration from minus Lt by 2 to Lt by 2. Because from the rear to the front uh, of that it is taken and ky into uh, what is that we have in this y minus lr squared d squared y by dx square into dx so this integration if i do this integration i get fy i have taken this uh, quantity here what is there is equating to zero to get uh, deflection at free region that's all so mathematically looking at uh, for our requirement this equation so this fy is what is this uh, now, uh, uh, if I integrate this, this is what I'm going to have. This integration to perform here, uh, you have to really uh, look at uh, uh, your uh, uh, integral formula. Integration u v dx will be given by u integral v dx minus uh, uh, u dash integral v dx dx. So this is that the mathematical uh, uh, integral formula for uh, uh, such a, uh, uh, kind of integration because we have here differential form, we have also y. So y and its differential form is there and which you have to integrate and uh, uh, then uh, your uh, uh, integration is in this form. So applying this one can get, I am not going to uh, carry out this integration, rather I am going to uh, uh, show you the final expression, how is it going to be. So final expression, I leave it to you as a homework to get this and that value Fy equals Ky into Y1 plus Y2 into Lr plus Lt by 2. So let's call this equation as 42. So I get my Fy expression. So you understand what is y1 and y2? y1 is at the start of my contact line. What is my deflection? y2 is at the end of my contact line as it leaves the contact patch. What is my lateral deflection? 
LR is relaxation length, LT is the total contact patch length, right? So if I have this all expression in KY multiplied by KY is what is my F5? That's what is the expression that is now obtained uh, uh, um, here. So this is not uh, express as function of slip angle. That's uh, different. Uh, we'll come back to that later. Slip angle. Slip angle is an important phenomena. That is the reason why this FI comes. But I am now expressing this in terms of um, the tire elastic property uh, uh, as well as the uh, deformation that takes place in the tire and the contact patch length. So this, of course, you have this FI is going to be definitely function of alpha. We'll come uh, in a while for that to see how do you relate them all. Uh, now uh, you have this expression for FI. We also define another important uh, thing uh, during maneuverability or when lateral force comes is what is self-aligning torque. So how do you get your self-aligning torque M is at? Simple. That's again, you have to multiply with the TP. So whatever that you have, you have to multiply with the TP. So in this case, self-aligning torque uh, would be, uh, if I consider my elemental, so whatever that I integrate is what is the lateral force for an element. And I integrate that over the interval from minus LT by 2 to LT by 2. So same way if I consider that the elemental uh, deformation or the elemental force into uh, the momentum. So what is my momentum in that case? Look at uh, in my uh, uh, um, formulation of this derivation. This. So I have it here, my FY, DF. I have it here, say, D. F y, which is a, a summation of these two, resultant of these two, into this x, right, into uh, 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 this x, this x. So this this may be uh, in this direction. The resultant would be acting in this direction, and uh, into this x is what is going to give me self-aligning torque, and that self-aligning torque uh, would uh, make my uh, um, uh, uh, contact length to be uh, uh, aligning with the real thing, right? So this still uh, uh, will go off. So you see that uh, uh, this uh, D of Y into this X is what is for an element uh, that would create uh, elemental force that would create the self aligning talk about O. If I have that, and if I again integrate from minus LT by two uh, by two to LT by two, I would get my expression. So that's what is uh, now uh, going to be uh, here. So uh, what is my ex uh, expression there? So let me put, uh, that is KY, I take this out. That means that's equal KY. Integrate this from minus LT by two to LT by two. And you have now, additionally, this X comes into the picture. That's all. Otherwise, the rest all are same. LR square d square y by dx square into dx. So it's going to be integral xy dx minus integral x into this term dx uh, between this limit. So again, uh, uh, this is uh, uh, I leave it to you to work out and let us look at this integration work. result in ky into y1 minus y2 within bracket lt by 2 whole square by 3 plus lr into lr plus lt by 2. So this is equation number 44. Equation number 44 that gives you your message. So in another five minutes, I'll be completing today's class. Uh, and uh, see, this is now uh, an expression uh, uh, derived uh, using our string model proposed by Temple. So he proposes that the force exerted on the tire, force exerted on the tire over the contact length, but including an infinitesimally smaller length at the equatorial line of the uh, line in the free region. Whereas uh, Von Shippey has proposed integrating, we can also have a similar integral approach proposed by Von Shippey, integrating the lateral force <coughs> exerted onto the rim, instead of on a tire, exerted onto the rim by the tire, 
over an entire circumference, including the contact line. What would be the differences? Distribution of this uh, uh, force only. So, if I take uh, the one which is proposed by Temple, I would see that uh, between point B and C. So, B and C is somewhere it is lying here. So, the force distribution, if you look at, that would come something like this. That would come something like this. So, if this is the center of the contact patch, I will have my resultant Fy. Resultant Fy will be acting like this. Resultant Fy will be acting like this. So, this is the force exerted onto the tire. Right? So, this is my B and C, which is in which is the contact line. This is the contact line. What this temple uh, proposes is, what this one ship is proposing is, uh, uh, which I am not uh, uh, discussing through mathematical equation, but let me put uh, what does he proposes is, what is the force exerted onto the rim by the tire uh, for the entire circumference. But the rim is something which is not going to deform for those force. So that would be between B and C equally uh, 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 going like this. So that is something like this. So, this distribution is the force that is uh, uh, acting on the rim. So, this will be your Fy. It's also skewed to this side slightly. Uh, and uh, this length is what we call it as Tp. See, uh, if this is my contact patch, this is what is Tp here. And this is my center of the contact patch corresponding. But this is a rim now. This is a rim. This is tire. Force exerted on tire. Force exerted onto the rim because of this. And again, you have here PP. So it's one and the same. So one shippy has. This is one shippy. One shippy has considered this. Temple has proposed this. But both of their uh, uh, paper that you could look at, the reference papers. And that would result in the same kind of derivation. So the one which we derive is a force exerted onto the tire. And here he has to consider, in addition to this contact patch, he also has to consider this uh, infinitely smaller free length region. Whereas in this it is not so, uh, because the distribution is uh, uh, like this in the rim. That's only the difference between them. So uh, with that, uh, uh, understanding, we derived equation 44 and 43, uh, 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 44 and 42, 42 is what we had here, right, 42, so 43 I missed, what is this 43 equation number, equation number 43, what is equation 43, it's missing, what is this equation 43, that is considering the tire uh, rolling uh, without uh, any uh, uh, um, uh, tire is not rolling. Uh, sorry, the tire is not rolling. Non-rolling tire. This is what is the equation uh, 43 is for is for non-rolling tire. If a tire is not rolling and you have a side force, what would happen? The deflection at the front of the contact patch and the deflection at the rear of the contact patch would be same. That's what we consider. So, y1 is equal to y2 and that deflection, let me call it as y0. So, you remember in the first lecture of tire mechanics I started, I have defined three stiffnesses. So, lateral stiffness, if you look at the tire uh, platform is pulled in a lateral direction. So the tire is loaded but not rolling. So, what is the deflection in the lateral direction that you get is what is defining your lateral stiffness is what we define. Right, so that is what you should recollect. So that if you recollect the lateral deflection of the contact patch, this y1, y2, which was greater than y1 in our string model, is going to be equal and it's equal to y0 if I consider. Then I could define my uh, uh, um, uh, then this equation 42 is going to become what fy is going to be two times ky into y0. Then back at LR plus LT by 2. So look at equation 42. Equation 42 is an integral of this, and I got this. So when y1 is equal to y2 equals y0, I have two y0, I just have substituted in this. And I have my Fy for non-rolling tire. Very important. 
why I consider this for non-rolling tire, you would understand in a while. So this equation is what is 43. Why do we have to consider this all? Is because to define uh, uh, or to determine this Ky and Lr value. Ky and Lr value. That's why. So for that, uh, let's define now here. And uh, the beginning of the lecture also I have uh, defined it. Uh, what does that is? This alpha value. This alpha value here. If it comes here, this is point A, and I have drawn this is that now direction of wheel. And this alpha value here. This is y1, and uh, uh, this I can define this alpha value with the smaller angle as y1 minus y2 by L R that we have seen. So that would be uh, not L R L D. I'm sorry, L D. So that would be equal to that would be equal to because what is this? I just draw this line. This is so y2, this is y1, so y1 minus y2 by Lt is what is the angle alpha because uh, I want to define it in this way, negative angle. That's why this is minus uh, y2 minus y1 by Lt become y1 minus y2 by Lt and that would be equal to minus y1 by Lr. You can define this minus y1 by Lr. How this is y1 by Lr is uh, simple to uh, uh, define right uh, for that what you have to do uh, you have two expression here uh, i just tell you to do so find dy by dx and substitute x is equal to lt by 2 here you would uh, be able to prove that is minus y1 by lr so if i differentiate this dy by dx that's slope theta that is the angle alpha so what does that i have uh, in that you substitute so dy by dx at x is equal to lt by 2 i will have minus y1 by lr that's what is uh, I, i'm representing once again at this point once again at this point so let's call this equation as equation number 45 so that's useful that's required now why do i require now this equation defined uh, additionally is because uh, it is a challenge that uh, determination of kt uh, sorry ky and lr these two uh, parameters to be calculated or determined so that requires some experiment to be conducted what is that experiment is you would have a measurement of uh, lateral force as you vary your slip angle how do you vary your slip angle you have a drum you have uh, 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 the drum which is rotating over which your tire is mounted, which is tested. You can look at that from the Michelin Mega Factory. Uh, I was telling you that video. The different tests, how are they conducted? So you can have your slip angle varying in the tire and uh, the tire contact with the even loading. You can uh, uh, run the experiment and measure your lateral force developed because of your slip angle. And uh, uh, that variation is going to give you uh, the value. So I will conduct an experiment. I will find out what is my fy variation per slip angle so this i will conduct and find out similarly i will also conduct an experiment and find out what is uh, m is at by alpha and i will also do an experiment for a non rolling tire and find out what is my uh, uh, you know, this fy by y not so what is my fy supplied for the deflection y not so this is all what I will uh, do from the experiment. This is all from the experiment. In the industry, tire industry, they do for an every uh, tire batch, they will uh, evaluate the tire um, coronary performance by conducting such an experiment on a non-rolling tire and a rolling tire in a test rig. And they will see the life of the tire, how many hours it is running. Meanwhile, they will also have such data of uh, FI variation for uh, per unit slip angle and the uh, slip angle, uh, self aligning torque uh, uh, variation per degree uh, slip angle. So, if we have that, uh, uh, then uh, what is the advantage? How can you quantify these two? Is what is very clear from this mathematical model proposed. And that's what is that I am going to write down and end the class today. So what is that? Uh, let me now uh, find my expression of, uh, uh, so I had my equation 45, which was alpha 
y1 minus y2 by lt which is also equal to minus y1 by lr that we have seen so i'm going to use this this equation 45 use this equation and then uh, rewrite your equation 42 and uh, um, 44 so what is my 42 equation that's for fy so fy equals 2ky i had there the expression uh, what was that expression fy was so 42 becomes like that fy equals ky into uh, uh, y1 plus y2 within bracket lr plus kt by kt or lt sorry lt by lt by 2 so this was the expression so in this expression i can substitute this i can use this and then i can have my fy by alpha fy by alpha that's what i want to uh, uh, get so this can be uh, written like this I can bring this uh, uh, in this expression y1 down and lt there on that side. Then I can do a manipulation and prove from this, uh, it's a simple manipulation. I can prove that as y2 by y1 equals 1 plus lt by lr. I can prove this. So this uh, uh, ratio equal is nothing but y2 by y1 equals this I can get. So by having that and then I can substitute y2 by y1 uh, in this case, in this y2 by y1 in this. So my equation fy becomes uh, 2ky y1 by lr into lr plus lt by 2 lt by 2 whole square and uh, this y1 by lr here whatever is that is replaced by uh, this i would ultimately get my equation then see this is what is uh, when i substitute this is what is uh, my alpha right so the alpha I can take it down, so I'll have Fy by alpha, one expression. I also have this value determined from experiment, but I'm manipulating my mathematical model for uh, this way, Fy by alpha equals 2ky into LR plus LT by 2. Okay. And this is the equation number 46. This can be easily obtained with this relation 45 substituted in 42. So using 45 and 42, I can prove this I can get this expression. So I have experimental value of that. I also have now this expression from my string model. And similarly, I can get MZ by alpha. And the MZ by alpha is KY in the LT. Uh, as in bracket, I have LT by 2 whole squared by 3 plus LR into LR plus LT by 2. LT by 2. So this is the equation number 47. So why do I have this? I have these two now experimental value. So if I do now uh, find the ratio of these two. So if I do this 47 by 46, this ratio, you see this KY here and the KY here disappears. Disappears. And what is that I'll get? Because you know M is at is nothing but Fy into Tp, pneumatic trial. Remember, so I'll get my expression of pneumatic trial. So that Tp is going to be, if this goes off, I'll have my expression Lt by 2, very interesting expression, and Lt by 2 whole squared by 3 plus Lr into Lr plus Lt by 2 divided by LR plus LT by 2 per square. So this is the expression. In this expression, KY is not there. I have my pneumatic trait. <laughs> because these two values, these values are obtained from experiment. So the ratio will give me what is in my pneumatic trait. Pneumatic trait can be experimentally found out. And you can see in Wong textbook for different truck tires, what is this pneumatic 
trail value, pneumatic trail value is given. So if we know this, in this only unknown is LR. LT can be found out uh, experimentally um, by an you know, optical arrangement, as a sensor. So it can exactly measure what would be the contact length of the tire. And uh, you would be able to have uh, determining this LR for this. That's the advantage. So relaxation length is quantified uh, with this model like this. Uh, from the equation 48. So 48, uh, I would be able to get what is my LR. And how do I get my KY? That is the reason why I also had my uh, uh, static experiment without uh, considering tire rolling. So I have my FY equals 2KY Y0 into LR plus LT by 2. That's 43 equation. Number. So in this equation, if I take this Y0 down, FY by Y0, what is that I have? 2KY into LR plus LT by 2. Right? And then I square on both sides, so it's going to be Fy by Fy naught square. That's going to be 4Ky square into Lr plus Lt by 2 whole square. And I also have my expression now uh, for Fy by alpha uh, from equation uh, uh, equation 46. What was that? That's equal to 2Ky into LR plus LT squared by 2. So I did this purposely so that I have LR plus LT by 2 whole square term here also that. If I take ratio of these two, so let me call this equation as uh, equation number uh, 49. Uh, so this equation as uh, 49 and uh, uh, this is my equation. 46. So now 49 by 46 would give me this disappears and 2ky. That gives me uh, what is that? 2ky. So these values fy by fy naught is from experiment. This is also from experiment. So I will have 2fy uh, equal that value from experiment. And that solves for KY, K, KY. So that is how KY is determined. So uh, what does that you understand? Uh, the pneumatic trail is independent of uh, KY uh, in one equation. <coughs> and in another equation, uh, you have uh, uh, LR has disappeared uh, and you are able to have KY. So KY is found and then you can find the LR as well. So this uh, having value of KY and LR and my expression 42 and uh, uh, 42 and the MSR expression is what 44. So 42 and 44 gives me my variation of FY and MSR. So knowing KY and LR uh, from equation. 42 and 44, I would get uh, expression for the force generated in the contact patch for lateral force and EM reset. And this expression or this equation can be employed in the vehicle simulation model as a tire model for further investigation of uh, vehicle directional control and stability. Why? Because uh, uh, what is the significance of uh, alpha? It is a fundamental requirement for the study of directional control and stability during maneuverability or during hard cornering. That's what we have seen. So in such cases, you would have these uh, this force Fy and MZ is uh, coming uh, into expression and we are able to solve. And the, what is importantly here is we do not consider the effects here. And uh, that is uh, the reason you can say that uh, this is all the thing with the assumption of steady state cornering. So you are looking at uh, this entire string model during steady state maneuverability uh, and you are deriving this. So with that note, uh, let me stop today's class uh, with uh, uh, completing characterization of uh, your cornering behavior of tire uh, um, uh, model. And what is that left in the next classes? We will look at what is 
uh, another uh, popular model called the Hans Pajeka model or magic tire model, wherein I have one equation, rather this uh, uh, 31 equation number or 25 equation number or 42 or 44, what we have seen in the last two classes, I will have only one equation that could fit for all the three uh, variation of fx, fy and ms. That's the beauty of that uh, equation and uh, uh, is what we will understand. That is associated with a lot of experimental uh, uh, data and the data is what is brought into a curve fit and the curve fit has been uh, uh, expressed through a math mathematical equation wherein you would uh, have a variation of fx uh, as longitudinal slip or fy as uh, uh, slip angle or mz as slip angle and that one formula is what I am going to teach you in the next class and that's the last class of concluding of our uh, tire mechanics and as a whole the course vehicle dynamics. So with that note, let me finish today's class and good day to all of you. If we have any further doubts, we can ask, otherwise I will stop uh, at this point of time lecture.